Hello everybody, Chris here. This is a video two of three on a software product called Notion that I think is amazing. Literally my favorite piece of software in the last couple of years. Use it for all sorts of stuff. In the first video we talked about, you know, the, the fact that Notion is documents. They are these collaborative, easy to edit, low friction shared documents that go so far in keeping teams together. I work on a lot of different teams. I'm the co-founder of CodePen. Uh, so for that, there's a bunch of us developers, CodePen is mostly developers, that all, in, in, in anybody that works at CodePen uses Notion. Notion too. It doesn't matter that you're a developer, but this series is kind of digging into how Notion helps a web development team. So we're going to be digging into that. How does it useful for that? Now, Notion doesn't help you write lines of code, but it helps with everything around that universe in such a great way. And so it's about communication and documentation and Notion helps with meetings. Let's dig into that. So CodePen is a uh, all remote team. So it's not just work from home. We're not just working from home right now. We work um, from home or at offices all the time, but remote from each other in different cities all around the world. So sometimes a little extra tooling is needed for that. Although I would argue that teams, whether they're remote or not, should kind of behave like their remote in terms of shared documentation and how they write and communicate with each other. So let's look at just meetings for one thing. Now this is just one kind of meeting, but at CodePen we have a meeting on Mondays. Now we have a variety of meetings all week, of course, but kind of the big one perhaps uh, is all hands. I think a lot of companies have all hands meetings, right? You're familiar with that? Everybody at the company is at it, literally everybody. In our case, not a big deal because it's like under 10 people, you know, but still everybody's at it. And it's scrum-like to some degree and that's changed over time. So let's get into that. One, one of them is that uh, the way that we used to do it and not because it's bad, it's just we've changed. So this is one way that you could still do it is that an all hands meeting literally goes person by person. And that's what we call our kind of our old format. Who knows, maybe someday we'll go back to this. But it's a it's a document that is on a certain day that it, the structure of that meeting then is like, let's talk about the big announcements for the day. If there's anything global that needs to be talked about on Monday, set the stage for the week, that kind of thing. And then go person by person. And if there's particular things that that person uniquely needs to talk about, they can do it then. But then there's a structure for it beyond that. That, which is tell us what you did and hopefully that matches with what you said you were going to do last week so there's some comparison that's possible there and if that stuff didn't happen you can talk about why which is interesting because if they, it didn't happen it probably has to do with blockers something unexpected that happened that week that you can then talk about and then talk about what you're going to do so it might be things that you didn't get done last week or a new list of things that you're going to do and then that blockers is a big deal like I plan to do this stuff but I can't and unless I get X, Y, and Z from other people or other things happen in the world that allow me to do that. Or if I don't have any direct blockers, like what do I wish that I had? What would really allow me to do my job better or unlock possibilities for me if I had it? I like people thinking and talking about that. Like what do I just wish that I had on top of what do I absolutely need to do my job? So that can be a structure of a meeting and we did that literally for years. And there's nothing wrong with that format. It's just that we're such a small team at CodePen that we found that uh, uh, we ended up talking about projects mostly it was less about the individual and more about like just what are we working on. So instead of going person by person, we ended up talking more project by project. So we might start a meeting and talk about general announcements for the week, what's going on, what's the plan for the month, you know, a little bit wider vision. Um, uh, than, than just like the week. Sometimes it's nice to have things in context the best that you can. Then start it with some important things like Marie's still talking at the top, talking about customer success, problems that customers are having, just so that we make sure that that's the first thing we talk about every week, the most important thing, how are customers doing? And then beyond that, um, go project by project. So here's an example project that we were just recently working on. Where's that project page in Notion? I want a one-click access to go over there and look at what's going on with the project here. 
Where is it in the code base? Where are the designs for it? Who's on it? Just at a glance so I can see. And then these people will end up talking about this project during the meeting. What was done last week? What's gonna happen this week? So the same kind of structure, only it's project by project instead of person by person. They can put anything in here. They can put code pen embeds in here. They can embed Figma files in here. There can be screenshots, little movies, all kinds of stuff. And then a dedicated section for people who aren't on that project to ask questions about it and do it here in Notion. So I could be like, you know, what are the data requirements here? Have we talked about that? Uh, uh, note that that's so low friction. I just click in there, I do it. Yeah, if somebody wants to, to talk about it and be like, yeah, you know, yes, we did, blah, blah. Um, cool, I'm not gonna send that <laughs> at the moment, but that's just uh, an, an example. So you can have a meeting that has a structure like this without Notion, right? Well, you can, but I'm a huge advocate of having these documents, these, in this case, dated documents, in Notion. And then next week, when another all hands comes along, you come in here, you duplicate this, uh, and you change up that document for what's changed for the new week, and you keep around that old document as archival. So you can like look through time what was going on. It's useful for all kinds of reasons. You know, as the owner of a company, you might want to be looking at documents from the past and figuring out who was doing what and, and how things turned out the way they turned out. That's just generically useful. You might even like later write a blog post that's like, oh, here's how this feature evolved. Look, we have all these historical screenshots from it during progress, and that's just fascinating to begin with. So that's a particular kind of meeting, the all hands meeting, the like, this is a project. You know, and it, it, it you know, I, I haven't even mentioned it, the most important thing. The most important thing is that then throughout the week, people are referring to this document. Like, oh, what did we say what we were gonna do? Oh, it's Wednesday already. I should, I should go in there and make sure that we're on target for the week and, and, and we're doing what we told the rest of the team that we're going to be doing because they might be counting on us to get those things done, you know? Uh, there's no question like, what did we talk about again? Come the next week, it's like, oh yeah, you know what? I turned out I worked on something else instead. It's like, N that's not good for a development team. Did everybody just forget what they said they were gonna do or forget what was talked talked about. That could happen if there wasn't like written documentation that was easy to access and easy to edit. You know, this type of structure keeps people on track. It keeps people on, 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 on towards the goal, which is just wonderful. Now, there's another other kind of meetings uh, uh, too, right? Here's an important one, which is like, kind of like a project kickoff meeting, right? Uh, here's a template that we have for the project uh, process. I've talked about this a little in the first video that I really like using Notion to, to organize projects. Now, let's just talk about the meetings thing for once though, is that you might, you know, we have this document that the structure is that if somebody has an idea for a project or there's just an obvious project that we're working on um, that falls into this medium scope, which isn't like we're changing the entire direction of this entire giant thing at this company, or I'm making this little micro feature and getting out the door. It's all that stuff in the middle, the beefier projects that require time and planning to do, they'll use this document. Duplicate this document, pull out the stuff that you don't need, use the stuff that you do need. What's the first stage of a document like this? Just describe it in a sentence. You know, you should be able to talk about a project really clearly. So if you can, just do a one sentence on it. Like, what is this thing? Uh, and then that thing hopefully has some business importance to it and it has some user success to it. If it doesn't have either, it's obviously not good as a project. It could be strongly one or the other though, ideally it's both, but it, you know, there's certain projects that just have to happen one or the other. For example, you know, doing some advertising related project probably doesn't have a lot of user success to it, but could have a lot of business success to it. Or adding some feature that's really important to users may not directly drive a bunch of upgrades or something that's important to the users that you have. So it could be strongly user and not business. You know what I mean? So that stuff needs to be talked about way at the top of a project, way before any design happens or planning or technology requirements or anything. Then everybody has to agree. And in this Notion document, we literally like check a box. Yeah, we agreed on it. We might like have a comment discussion on it 
um, talking about when and how and who agreed on it. Then it will go to design. That's on purpose. That's like design-driven development. Like literally, let's talk about the design. Let's get the designs in place so that we're thinking about the UX, how it fits into the app, how it makes sense to users way up top in the beginning of a, of a project and then agree on it. Because <laughs> that's important too. It's not that the design was done, but that everybody saw it and they talked about it. That's what I mean by meetings here is that at every one of these stages, you might stop, literally have a meeting about it. Everybody be looking at this Notion document, commenting, just being in here. Uh, uh, and then agreeing on these stages, and then you move forward. You move into development. This is where Kanbaning might start. Now, design might have a Kanban too, because you might design little parts of it, or there might be a design team who's designing little pieces of it and using Kanban cards for that. Uh, but development almost certainly does. You know, the, at least in our experience, there's always Kanbaning happening at the development stage. Then there's QA and deployment and marketing and all this stuff. This is great to have. We didn't always have this. Notion is what unlocked for us this, um, this great project planning kind of structure. And having this document is super useful for that. And it can evolve over time. You come in here, you edit this template, then the next project uses the improvements to that uh, over time. And all these are meetings along the way. Now there's another kind of meeting, which is just like any old meeting. Uh, it could just be like, ah, you know what? I got a business call with somebody. I want to talk to them about how we might integrate with each other. Of course, you have those kind of meetings all the time. For those, I literally might like kick off a private document. And this is where, uh, so this would be like, you know, code pen plus super cool biz. And I would just be sloppy in here. I might be on the phone. I might be on a Zoom call. I might, you know, might just be talking in Slack or something. But this is where I'm just keeping. Uh, uh, maybe you know, I I, I don't want to mandate that you keep sloppy notes, but I just mean that you can. Like you don't have to be afraid of everybody at your entire company seeing this document and worrying about getting it all formatted for public eyes as you take this meeting. But I do this all the time, have little quick little things that I'm just taking notes on so that I have it. And it's synced across all my computers and devices and it's easy to edit and all that. And then eventually I'll probably end up putting it somewhere in our like biz dev and sales or something like just have a record of who I talk to, what their contact information is, when it happened, what we talked about, so that there's a thread that people can follow on who's been talked to and what about what and when. Uh, and maybe, you know, maybe some of that stuff stays private. Maybe I have this opportunity to use the amazing permission system and notion to say, well, I'm just going to share this with my co-founder or I'm just going to share this with Marie or something. And then we'll talk about it. And then maybe it eventually goes public or maybe it never does, or maybe I just delete it. But that's another kind of meeting is that you just use the meeting structure in here, or the, the document structure in here to just take general notes and then clean it up later if you want to. I think that's super useful. Now, it, 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 you know, it's no, if I Google uh, Notion CRM, I think they have a pretty nice um, template for that, which is easy to start with. But this is just an example of a document they have. I do this a little bit, but probably not as much as I should, is that I uh, 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 structureize talk these meetings. You know, like if I have a bunch of biz dev meetings, maybe I should have them like this, uh, which is, you know, we talked about in the first video, Notion replacing other apps like a to-do list app and a dedicated Kanban app and stuff. I didn't even mention CRMs, but uh, your CRM can be one of those things that just comes into Notion. And there's a reason for doing it. First of all, the table structure here is so useful and all the different, that the table cells aren't just text, you know, they can be all these different types, they can be files, they can be formulas, it's really a database that can be used in interesting ways, it has all these different uh, filters for viewing it in different ways, really wonderful. But my favorite part about this is that you're not losing, it doesn't force you to uh, kind of like only use this structure, like where's my loose notes then? Where's just the general stuff we talked about? Where's the random screenshots that are important to this particular person? They go in here, you know, each particular entry to this table then is this like has this structured data, but it's just a document too. 
it can be anything in here, opening up all kinds of organizational possibilities. So I just love that, that like everything's a document and Notion super useful. So any kind of meeting is just, it's just awesome. It can be enhanced through Notion, keeps everybody on page in the, in the best possible way. So meetings are totally enhanced with Notion. And they go from, you know, okay, useful without having a document related to it to tremendously useful and awesome with Notion, if you ask me. There's even a joke about emails in our industry, right? Like, that meeting could have been an email. Uh, and they're not wrong sometimes. You know, you get a bunch of people into a meeting, you know, you get them all wrangled up, the meeting starts, and then somebody's like, okay, everybody, now make sure you commit all your code on Wednesdays or something, and then meeting's over. Over and you're like, okay, uh, could have just shot that around as an email. So that's kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> but some meetings aren't like that. I feel like most meetings are actually pretty useful. Like I certainly feel like over meetinged sometimes. So like there's a balance there, but usually a meeting is great for like, you know, I feel like I've said this a hundred times, but getting people on the same page and make sure that you're working on the right thing that everybody agrees on what you're working on. So Notion is great for that, uh, but it's great for just the idea of communication, period. Now, it's not like a Slack replacement. It's not a Zoom replacement, but it's a communication tool. It's even more like async from that, like a permanent version of communication, you know? So uh, let's look at this a little bit. Uh, 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 we have a project prioritization kind of board at CodePen, and it's not just for prioritization. It just happens to be in priority order for us to some degree but it's really the home base for all of our project documents in a table-like structure like this, not a Kanban, but uh, um, you know what I mean, like a table-like structure, although it's important to know this in, in, in Notion, any, any Kanban like this is just a database. You can view it in any number of ways. This would be a flip of a switch to turn it into a table. Here's a, like a random project that's kind of in progress at CodePen. Uh, SAS is a programming language that we offer at CodePen, and we really need to get it upgraded. But upgrading it isn't just a, you know, this kind of started life as like, ah, eh, it doesn't even need a project document. Somebody just needs to go in there and upgrade it, you know. But it turned into like, oh, it's actually complicated for a million different reasons. Let's, you know, do this in, in the right kind of way. And we never got around to making a full-blown project document for it, but that's okay. It can still enter the product board. It can still have a document in here when we can improve it over time. And one of the most important things was is like, oh, gosh, you know all that stuff we talked about? Let's write it down but not write it, you know, maybe sloppily at first, but then we'll move it into a task board. We'll split it up into individual things that people can work on. And as they do it, they can grab it uh, and tell the world that they're working on it. And so these cards become not just tasks, but also documents for that task. So it turned out that the way that we're going to handle this upgrade involves some database stuff. Well, what database stuff? What's the exact naming that we talked about? What's the exact plan here so that it, it can be referenced uh, by anybody here? So uh, this becomes a document that can have its own conversation. It could have its own Kanban cards, that kind of kind of thing. Um, um, we have this feature called pens as resources, pars on CodePen. And this feature affects that. So when we talk about that and we have a little meeting and it could have been a chunk of a Zoom, it could have been a conversation that happened in Slack. I come in here and say, and say we talked about that this is how we're going to handle that. So it becomes this permanent reference to that. That's what I mean by notion is communication is that this becomes this like canonical document of, of what was talked about. Now it also, it kind of doesn't matter who wrote this. Like I happen to write this, but this isn't saying Chris Coyer says that this, this is just a document. It's shared by our team. Anybody could come in here and fix up a sentence in here or refine it or change it or add bullet points or anything that they want to. Now that's, a thing about documents that I find interesting. Like the document itself, it doesn't really matter who wrote it and when. It just kind of doesn't matter in Notion. If it does matter, you can take that into your own hands. For one reason thing, if I leave a comment on something, I'm leaving it as myself and its date stamp. So if it matters who wrote it and when, use comments because those are attached to people. But the document itself isn't. Now I can find out who wrote it through like looking at the page history and the changes to the document, which can be really super useful. 
Uh, but for the most part, I don't like to think of documents that way. Any given document is just information. It's just communication that's, that's happening uh, uh, throughout the team. So here's another concept. If you're going to look for something because Notion has become this amazing hive of information for your company and how you work together and you don't find it in Notion, then put it in Notion. That like, you're like, oh gosh, what did we talk about? Did I, do, does it turn out I have to look it up in Slack or have to call somebody about it or figure it out? That's a moment where you're like, well, if I needed to know, maybe I'll need to know again. So it should be easy to reference or somebody else will need to know. So I'm going to put it in Notion. I think that's clutch. If you can't find it, make sure that that's your opportunity to fix it. Now that's true of Notion. It's true about your product it's, it, itself too. You know, like if you're, you know, and had to figure out something to use a, use your own product and you couldn't figure it out. Well, it should probably be in the docs then, shouldn't it? So that, that kind of thing. I, this type of communication I find is not just like a nice to have for teams. I think this is vital for high functioning teams. I think you'll find any high functioning team has this like internal knowledge base for each each other that references everything that's actively being worked on, has been worked on, is going to be worked on for the team. It needs to be clear as day. I'd like to talk about the idea that Notion is documentation. Now, you can take that literally if you want. I think this would be kind of cool, actually, is you know how you can um, flip a document to be uh, public. Uh, if you'd like to, from Notion, which means that uh, all these documents have URLs, right? It has a URL anyway, whether it's private or not. If I want to send a URL to a particular document to a coworker, I can come in here, grab this link, and shoot it over to them uh, in whatever kind of <laughs> way I have to do that, email or Slack or some other kind of chat app or anything. But if I were to grab that URL and like tweet it or something, most people would hit it and it would be a 404 page. Like they can't see this public document uh, of mine unless I make it public or I've invited them to have access to it. Now, what would be kind of cool is, you know, this documentation page was the documentation for CodePen, for example, or whatever app out there you want to do. You could make your public documentation for your app in Notion. That'd be a pretty cool, pretty low cost way uh, to do documentation that's really easy to keep up to date and stuff. Now, I'm not quite talking about that, although I think that's a really cool idea and like to see more people do that. And I'd like to see that evolve over time, having Notion uh, be a way to power public facing websites in kind of a better way. I'm mostly talking about internal documentation. So this is just like a page in our CodePen workspace on Notion uh, that is just internally facing stuff like conversations we've had that are important to everything, like how billing works on CodePen. Like that should be referenceable by anybody that needs to get, get in there and look at stuff, but not the code base, but just talking about the code and how it works and operates and how we think of it. Coding is another huge obvious example here. Like, well, how do we operate? Uh, we even have a document that's just like, what, what's the overall plan here? How do we think about our code base in general? How do we do code review? How do we expect code comments to happen? How do we expect Git stuff to happen? Uh, what does our you know, Git repository setup look like? Just little docs, you know, and sometimes they're big, big overarching concepts. Sometimes they're just like, how do we, how do we expect React code to be written at CodePen? Sometimes they're little tiny things like, oh, you need a state machine, do it this way. If you need to add a hook, do it this way. Uh, that kind of thing. You know, this just got me the other day. I was, um, I was, I was trying to write an integration test, and I, uh, uh, I was like, where do we do that again? Brain fart. Mm, I need to add one. What are the, where do I even do it? What's the best practices? How do I spin all that up? And I was like, I bet there's a doc for it. Um, where do I find that doc, you know, hmm, is it in our coding guy? Oh, there it is, integration test. And I knew it was because I wrote it. But that's how funny documentation can be, you know, and I know this from working on CSS tricks too and blogging over the years that, you know, I'm my biggest customer. I'm constantly landing on my docs that I've written for myself. Uh, this integration test one is one of them, you know. I knew when I was working on this as we were updating how they work and what technology they use and 
how to write new ones and all that. It's like, let's talk about it. What repo is it in? Where is it? What commands do you have to run? How do you run just one test instead of the whole suite? How do you create a brand new test? How do you have those tests expect the data that they need to, to make the test successful? That kind of thing. Uh, and I absolutely needed to read every word of this recently uh, to, to, to get myself adding a new test because I just kind of forgot, frankly, and the fact that it was in here made it a much easier progress. It could have been hours of me poking around trying to figure out again. It could have been wasting somebody else's time trying to, if they remembered or us figuring it out together or whatever, but it didn't. I could just do it because the documentation uh, was right in here. So CodePen is literally documentation in that way, which I just love. A lot of this can be support based too. Marie does on our team does a good job of keeping our support documentation up to date, meaning that, um, for example, just how to do certain support tasks. Now, uh, uh, some of that is kind of personal to us, so I won't even click there, but that's a high level important thing that we do on CodePen is just to, uh, is, is to, is to have these documents. Like how is, what if somebody wants a username that's not available? How do you process a refund, but a refund that's under these circum special circumstances and all, all kinds of like how to document. And that's because everybody does support at CodePen. So, uh, uh, it's nice to, to like have somebody that doesn't do it regularly have referenceable documentation on how certain support requests are so that they can do it themselves. We're not all in the same office. We're a remote team. So that makes that notion extra valuable for that uh, 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 kind of thing. Now, just as a tidbit, a little trick to add with this, again, when you can't find something in Slack, and then you do it and you figure it out, add it to Slack so it's findable again by the next person. But you might have that moment early. You might be witnessing a conversation take place, for example, in your Microsoft Teams thing or in a GitHub issue or in Slack is a common one. People are talking about things, they're deciding, they're exchanging some information. That's a moment where somebody involved who's either a part of that or was watching that should lift it up and put it in Notion so it's a lot easier to find. Just a couple of last things to cover here. Um, one of them is, you know, we started this talking about meeting and documentation and all that. Um, there's a kind of meeting that I really like that is like, it's kind of like a meeting that never happened. Like a meeting that you didn't have to have because Notion makes it possible. Now we talked about our all hands structure at CodePen to start this video and how we uh, have moved it to more like talking about things project by project instead of person by person. Well, that means that we lose that person by person thing, but we didn't want to lose it. That's still, you know, like it's, it's not like that we wanted that gone forever. I still want people talking about what they did and have that be a referenceable thing for us too. And we kind of made that uh, individual documents for individual people uh, that are duplicated week to week along with the all hands document. And that could be kind of great. It just, you know, for example, I always favorite mine throughout the week so that I can bullet point things that I've done throughout the week that become something that other people can reference too. So on Thursdays each week, this is just a process that we just happen to be doing right now. Everybody, these are kind of due for everyone, including me, of course. And uh, everybody comes in and reads that. Like, what did other people do? How, what can I change? chime in on here to give context or help or anything or make sure that other people are on track. Just some group accountability and some group, you know, nudging and communicating and helping to make that stuff kind of happen. Uh, really useful, I think. Uh, it also means that the more stuff that's in Notion, including just little offhanded stuff like this, um, becomes searchable. So Notion is searchable, which is huge. Uh, for example, if I'm like, where is that integrate? You know, we do our best to keep things super organized in Notion. I think that's valuable. Uh, but it's nice that if you can't find it anyway, I could go like, where's that integration test document again? Oh, there it is. Boom, found it. You know, that that searchability thing uh, becomes a big deal. And that's, uh, uh, that's just true of anything. It, it, their search has gotten uh, really good over the years on Notion, and I use it all the time to, to pop over to what I am looking for. Now, uh, the last thing I want to mention is uh, the, the notification uh, kind of thing. When you leave comments, you know, and I, am, I was making the point that individual, like this paragraph, who cares who wrote this paragraph? It doesn't matter. 
I happen to write it, but it, and I could find that out if I had to. Uh, but it, it doesn't matter in the sense that like it's just not important for this document. So I like that that metadata isn't like jammed down my face. But sometimes it does matter who and when wrote something. That's what comments are for, and there's always a way to know what's happening with comments in this updates feature. You know, and updates are, are more than that. You know, you can um, say that you're following a page with this updates feature, uh, and if I like don't care what's happening <laughs> with this document, I can flip it off. Uh, but if I really care about a document, I flip it out, and then when there's changes to that document, they appear here. Now that's tremendously useful, but also comments appear here too, which I always care about. So this is people talking to each other and talking to me uh, about things that are happening. You know, I can be like, oh, in my weekly document, there's some stuff that I need. I'm going to mention that I need it. And then the person who can make it happen can chime in on and tell me that they've now seen it. You know, there's like real communication happening there. Uh, which I love. So I think that'll do it for, for this video. It's nice to dig into some actual documents and, and so you can see how uh, things work here in Notion. A uh, big fan of how Notion keeps teams you know, documented and communicating well so they have an opportunity to become a really high-functioning team. It's just great for